Good morning and welcome to the online devotion from Mount Gilead Church. My name is Mike Bridgewater and I'm the operations director here at the church building and today I have a special guest, Fred Schmidt. Hey Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, Fred's uh, getting ready to change jobs here at the church. He's going to be uh, moving right. out of family ministry and moving into pastoral care. That's right. Yeah, uh, feeling God's calling toward pastoral care and to continue serving at the church is a great opportunity. So I'm excited to um, just connect with people, help people grow in their faith, and help others to uh, be pastors for our congregation as well. Um, Fred uh, helped me out doing the devotion a couple weeks ago, and I uh, I corralled him into yeah, right. to joining me today. That's and, right. And uh, a few weeks ago when I was uh, planning out this study, I, I wanted to do this parable on the barren fig tree. Yeah. And when I started looking into it, it was like, man, I gotta, we got to tell this whole backstory uh, before we get to the barren fig tree. So This is like some feel-good stuff right here. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> yeah it's really feel-good stuff. Um, Not so much. So uh, when, you, when you look at uh, Luke 12 and 13, there's a kind of a bad chapter break there at mm. the beginning of 13 um, because it's really the end of chapter 12. Um, but just to kind of recap, there's been there's been this huge interaction with this huge crowd that's gathered. I mean, it's a it's a giant crowd that um, people are stepping on each <laughs> other. So I mean, we can't even comprehend that kind of a crowd unless you're like going to the Indy 500 or at a football game or something. It right. Was, well, it especially was, in the last two years that we haven't seen <laughs> we haven't seen crowds like that. Yeah. But yeah. But just a a tremendous scene happening. Um, and then somebody asks a question. And Jesus, you know, just gives them a nice, simple yes, no answer, right? No. No. It's just never the case. Never the case. <laughs> he, he, uh, a guy asked the question about his inheritance. He tells him the story of the rich, the parable of the rich fool. Mm. Um, and a little bit after that, Peter asks a question about, is this for us or everybody? And instead of saying yes or no, he tells another parable, <laughs> the parable of the unfaithful steward. And then... Uh, then it appears that back in Bible times, people had the ability to discern the weather. <laughs> um, I wish that was the case today. <laughs> right. There are there are weathermen, you know, weather weather people that predict the weather all the time, but they're not very good at it, are they? <laughs> I mean, just like this week, um, it was supposed to be really severe weather, and we had a little bit of rain, but no yeah. severe weather. No, it, I mean, it can change like that. It'd be nice to have a job like that where you could be... You could be right, a, you know, a minority of the time and still still have a great All you great have career. to do is uh, predict partly sunny every day and you'd be right 60% of the time. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but they, they can't even get that right. <laughs> um, but then there's a really interesting thing at the, right at the end of Chapter 12 that talks okay. about um, going to court. Oh, yeah. Uh, t tell, tell us a little bit about that, that parable, or not the parable, but that's that little piece of the story there. What, what's going on there in, in like uh, Luke 57, 13, 50, 12, 57? Yeah, so at the end of chapter 12, 57, 58, 59, I'll just read it here real quick. Uh, Jesus says, Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? As you were going with your adversary to the magistrate, try hard to be reconciled on the way, or your adversary may drag you off to the judge. And the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you that you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. So what he's saying is, while you have time, settle that account. Don't don't wait. If you think you might be getting a better deal in front of the judge, that's not that's there's no guarantee there. Right. Yeah. That's uh, if you get the plea bargain, you might want to take it. Right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. And then. Um, this thing about somebody asking a question, it happens again. It says um, here at the beginning of chapter 13, it says, About this time Jesus was informed that Pilate had murdered some people from mm -hmm. Galilee as they were offering sacrifices at the temple. Yeah. Um, you know, the character Pilate, uh, sometimes you feel sorry for Pilate. Yeah. You know, you feel like he gets boxed in there at the end, but you have to remember he was not a good man. You know, he, yeah. he, he was a bad dude. Um, people were being killed. Mm -hmm. He was responsible for that. Um, and here some people are trying to get Jesus to get into a little political discussion with them. And again, 
No, he's not going to do that, does he? No. Then that's the good. That's the good thing about studying scripture like this straight through is that you start to see that there's there's a pattern that emerges with Jesus's conversations. Mm-hmm. The question that gets asked to Jesus is almost like, oh, let me tell you a story. Thanks for that question. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you the question you should be asking. Right. And then he gives the parable. So, so what does uh, so what does he tell him here um, in the beginning of chapter thirteen when he tells him about these these sinners that had gotten killed by? Yeah, well, what they're what they're asking essentially to Jesus is, are they worse off? At, are are these people worse off as sinners because of what they had to suffer? And Jesus isn't, of course, he's not going to answer that question. But it's it's kind of like this comparison trap that we can fall into as as Christ followers, you right. know, thinking that it, it, with comparison, right, you lose either way. Mm-hmm. If you find yourself better than somebody else, well, then you start getting puffed up with pride. Yeah. And then if you find yourself always looking at others as way better than you, well, then you start to feel depressed or, or lowly. And so the comparison is just a trap. And I think that Jesus kind of speaks to that a little bit. No, stop comparing yourself. Everyone, baseline, you need to repent. Yeah. You need to turn back to God. Turn away. Yeah. And then he kind of figures out that some other people are thinking, what about these other people that got killed when this tower fell on them? <laughs> right. And what's his answer there? Well, his, his answer there is, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you too will perish. So it's, it's a... It's the same answer. It's the same answer, yeah. You need to repent. And then he tells this wonderful parable of the barren fig tree, which is the thing I wanted to finally get to after about six weeks. <laughs> and uh, do you want to read that parable for us? Sure. Okay. So then he told this parable. This is in chapter 13, verse 6. A man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it, why should it use up the soil? Verse 8, Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Mm. Yeah. So, the fig, the fig is a, uh, yeah. it's represents the nation of Israel a lot in the in the Bible, mm-hmm. right? And uh, so this part of this parable, or this parable is like a fulfilled prophecy um, because Israel... Yeah, because deca- decades later... Decades later, you know, like f- four decades later in AD 70, uh, Israel, Jerusalem gets leveled by right. the Romans. Yep. And like he said at the beginning of 13, their buildings fell down on them and... The Romans killed them, um, yep. so it's kind of prophecy fulfilled. But, but us as Christians today, how can we look at this parable of the fig tree mm. and make application to you know our daily lives within our interactions? Um, well, in, in some ways, this is a terrifying parable. Yes, and terrifying for us as Christians, wondering, am I bearing fruit, mm. or am I not bearing fruit? How do we? How can we take inventory of of our lives in following Jesus and and bearing fruit? And I think that's one of the, I think that's one of the blessings of being involved in a church or or being involved in a in a small group or those types of things. Because um, when you're linked up with other Christians, you can you can validate the fruit in in one another and go. You know what? I notice that there's progress that you've been making in your life, and I and you're bearing fruit. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that that's or uh, on the flip side of it, there's some accountability there to say, hey, like you know, you've been you've been kind of struggling with this for a while. Can what what can we do differently so that you can kind of uproot that struggle and um, repent in, in in a sense? Mm-hmm. And then there's some accountability there through the community that helps you to then go into bearing fruit. So I think there's there's a lot of layers to apply yeah. in this parable. Um, yeah, in in that parable, you see this uh, this gardener who yeah. who I see as Jesus is he's like, hey, I'm I'm going to work this soil. I'm going to work with this plant. I'm going to try to fertilize it and help it and get it to grow. Right on. Uh, but if it doesn't produce fruit, though, 
they're going to cut it down. Yep. And uh, that is that is a terrifying thought. Um, as I've studied these parables, Fred, I've it's like there's all these names for Jesus. You know, hmm. you know the wonderful counselor. He's also a fruit inspector. <laughs> you know, he's, like, he's like the stamp. You know, is there is there fruit? Are we seeing fruit? <laughs> um, so that's he, right. He is a fruit inspector at the end of the day. Um, well, and and it kind of reminds me back to like Justin's message last Sunday. Uh, we, he was talking about the conversation between Jesus and the thief on the cross, mm-hmm. and how even even up to to that moment, there was still opportunity for him to find grace. Now, maybe the you know as we're talking about bearing fruit, that that season has that season has passed, but there's still an opportunity for him, and I feel like that's a little bit of what is going on as uh, in verse eight, as he as Jesus says. You know, leave it here for one more year. Like, there's still opportunity. There's yeah. still there's still a chance here. So, just to encourage anyone who's following Jesus and feeling like there's not much progress being made, or feeling like I've done too many bad things, I can't I can't follow Jesus. This isn't for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, this week is uh, one of the big weeks at the church building. Uh, yes, sir. We're expecting. Uh, quite a few people to come back to the building I think for the first time even after a couple years. Well, it would be uh, great. It's going to be great. We've uh, actually made quite a few changes in the building in the last few weeks and uh, some people will, will probably notice that Yeah. Um, this week. Um, Fred, thanks for thanks for joining us today. Absolutely, Mike. And uh, hope to see you guys here on Sunday at uh, 9 o'clock or 10.30. Have a great rest of your Friday and we'll see you on Sunday. Bye-bye. <laughs>